My name is Matthew Stamates. I work at the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Um, it's in the, the Gaithersburg campus. I'm within the Material Measurement Laboratory, and underneath that it's the Material Measurement Science Division, and the group that I work with is the Analytical Microscopy Group. Our group primarily focuses on um, a, kind of a big program that we call um, trace explosives and narcotics detection. So it's a trace contraband detection program. And this program is, is quite large, but we really what we want to try to do as the, as the nation's measurement laboratory, we are focused on kind of the, the fundamental measurement science issues that need to be addressed in trace detection. As the nation's standards laboratory, we are also heavily focused on developing standard test materials and protocols that can be used to help evaluate the current generation of the technology. And on top of that, we're also trying to kind of accelerate the development of the next generation of this technology with some of the standards that we develop. So we were approached uh, through an interagency agreement with the Department of Homeland Security and they asked us if we could uh, help them develop a shoe sampling system. The ultimate goal here would be that you wouldn't have to take off your shoes at the airport when you, when you try to fly. And so we said absolutely we can help you out. So uh, we started the program and you know NIST really isn't in the business of developing prototypes that would be deployed in a security setting. Instead, we wanted to understand the fundamental issues uh, associated with sampling shoes. So uh, what are some of the good ways to do it? What are the bad ways to do it? How do you actually measure it? How do you measure the performance of a system that's going to sample shoes? The design that we came up with is a kiosk style design. So you kind of walk in, you're sampled, and then you walk out. And the whole process takes about 10 seconds. And it's an aerodynamic sampling approach. Uh, with any kind of trace contraband or trace evidence collection approach, uh, there are usually two ways you can do it. One is wipe-based sampling, and many are probably familiar with this in, a, in an air, airport security scenario, where a screener will take a special piece of cloth, or, and it's usually mounted in a wand, and they will physically wipe down the surface of your laptop or your purse, or sometimes even your hands. And they're looking for trace contamination that could be present if you or the bad guy and you've got a explosive stuffed into your shoe or on your chest, right? Uh, the other approach for sampling is what we call aerodynamic sampling. And this is a non-contact way. What we're, we're using high velocity air jets, sometimes air blades, um, really taking advantage of the fluid dynamics in your system to sample something, whether it be a person or their feet or some object. Uh, so high velocity air jets impinge on a surface uh, introduce a tremendous amount of shear stress on that surface, which then removes contamination. Contamination is usually in the form of very small particles. And those particles are then transported in some direction that we want them to go. So with the shoe sampler, you walk in and a series of air jets are vectored at critical parts of the shoes, of the feet. Particles are then liberated and then we have a very large blower. It's, it's a suction device. It's drawing air into itself. And, uh, when the jets fire, particles are removed, and then this blower has established a, a bulk flow field that kind of swallows all of these particles. And ultimately, there would be a, a particle collector, and then probably some kind of preconcentrator, and ultimately, there would be a chemical detector after that. So that's basically how, how the shoe sampler works. Since it is an aerodynamic sampling system, we want to understand how the flow, the airflow, is moving in and around somebody as they're standing in the system. So uh, we use what's called Schlieren imaging. Uh, it is an optical technique that's been around for decades, and it allows you to visualize uh, density gradients in air. So we're able to visualize how the jets impinge on a shoe. Actually, we can see the jet impinging on a shoe. We also use what's called uh, flow visualization. It's, it's, we use laser light sheets and theatrical fog or smoke sometimes. So a laser light sheet is a two-dimensional wall of laser light. We introduce theatrical fog into this sheet and it illuminates brilliantly when it crosses the sheet. So it gives you a two-dimensional slice of how the flow is moving in your system. So it's a very, very useful tool for us to understand fundamentally how is the air moving when someone is in the shoe sampler. Uh, we also can use that same laser light sheet but um, use particle tracers. So we can, um, talcum powder is a great example. We just sprinkle a little bit of talcum powder on a certain section of the shoe and then we can sample that shoe and we can watch with the laser where the particles are going after they're removed by a jet. It's very, very useful characterization tools that we have. 
Another way that we characterized the performance of this particular prototype was with what we call particle release efficiency. So what we can do, um, we've developed a technique that can produce monodisperse polymer microspheres. They're very, very tiny plastic spheres, basically, um, on, the orders of, on the order of microns in diameter. And we can tailor make these. And we, I can also add a chemical compound in them. So if I want 20 micrometer particles with 5% TNT, I can make those. If I want 50 micron particles with 10% RDX in them, I can make those. So it's a, it's a particle tracer, it's a chemical tracer, and I can add fluorescence so I can use microscopy techniques and I can actually image them and visualize them and count them. Particle release efficiency in our shoe sampler was measured uh, by what we did first was we took a shoe and we kind of sliced it up into different, a grid pattern. We would take our polymer microspheres and deposit them onto a little glass cover slip and I would count how many particles were there. So say there's 100 particles. I would take that glass slip and I would put it on a certain section of the shoe. Then I'd walk in, sample myself, come back out, count how many particles are left over. It's a very simple technique. It takes a tremendous amount of time, but it's a very effective way at determining how well these jets are removing particles. And based on the flow visualization experiments we did, we're kind of guaranteed if a particle comes off the surface, we're guaranteed that it goes in the direction that we want it to go towards our particle collector. So that's kind of the basics of, of how the system works and how we characterize it. There, there's a lot of things that we learned about the limitations of sampling surfaces uh, using this aerodynamic approach. But we're very interested in, we're, and we're already starting programs um, and for ID card sampling systems. So you know, if I have to give you my ID, I have potentially just contaminated the surface of the ID. So let's sample that ID for contamination. So we're, we're heavily focused on understanding the limitations and how to optimize any kind of, of ID sampling system. Boarding passes are another are of great interest to us as well. The work that we did in the laboratory uh, is then given to the company that, that won the bid. And hopefully the, the idea there is to accelerate the development of the technology so that the company isn't kind of redoing the measurements that we've already done in the past. They kind of get a head start on, on uh, what they need to know to accelerate the development of their, of their shoe sampler.